Hello all, and welcome to another Coffee with Kilroy. Or what I sometimes call, many times call, yeah, you know the routine. Beverage and a book. My beverage. Coffee, hence the name of the episode. And the book, well, I'm going back to Tales of War. And today is September 22nd, and I know it's a Sanctuary Sunday, but which I normally try to... Stay away from war games. Give them a break, because I do that throughout the week. But today, uh, September 22nd, is an important date. Let me get a sip of my coffee. And take a look at what happened on this date. Can anybody guess? I'm sure you probably can. But on this date is a very famous battle. 22nd September. Let's go in a little bit closer here. You can read along with me. I need a bouncing ball or something. Um, the ruse that saved Western, the Western world, the Battle of Salamis, 480 BC. So 22nd September, 480 BC. Persia's mighty King Xerxes had sent his heralds throughout Greece demanding earth and water, symbols of submission. But the Athenian general, Themistocles responded with a brutal symbol of his own. He had the messenger put to death for daring to make his barbarian demands in the Greek language. Enraged, Xerxes follow, uh, resolved to conquer those foolish enough to resist him. Soon, Xerxes had assembled a, a huge army estimated by Herodotus uh, at 2,641,610 men. Well, that's a pretty exact number there. Herodotus was up on his math. But assumed by modern historians to be more uh, modest, 200,000. To cross from Asia Minor into Greece, he constructed two boat bridges uh, across the Hell's Point, And when waves destroyed them during a storm, he ordered the sea scourge with 300 lashes. Yeah, a lot of good that did. He then threw a pair of shackles into the water, grandly pronouncing, Ungracious water, your master condemns you to punishment for having injured him without cause. Xerxes, the king will pass over you, whether you consent or not. By then the storm had abated and his army, army easily crossed over on a new bridge. In spite of a defensive league formed by the Greek city-states, the Persians rolled irresistibly forward. In August of 480, they defeated the heroic Spartans at Thermopylae. Oh, I covered that earlier, August 20th. I told you I was going to be covering some more on this. I'll put a link to that in the description. Opening the route to Athens, which the Athenians had abandoned, leaving only a heavily fortified Acropolis. Soon that too had fallen, with all defenders slain. The assembled Greek generals as, as ever bickered interminably over tactics. Some wanted to withdraw to Corinth, while Themistocles argued vehemently for a naval engagement to destroy Xerxes' fleet. At length, it seemed that the Athenian had won the dispute, but only by threatening to withdraw his ships and men. But on this date, 22nd September, yet another debate erupted, and this time Themistocles took an even greater gamble with one of history's great military ruses. According to Aeschylus, who was pr present, he sent a slave with a secret message to Xerxes. The Athenian commander had sent me to privy without knowledge of, pri privily, without the knowledge of the other Greeks. He is a well-wisher to the king's cause and would rather that the success attend you than on his countrymen. Wherefore, he bids me to tell you that fear has seized the Greeks and they are uh, mediating a hasty flight. Hasty flight. And I need coffee. I wish I had some. Let's get some here. You can drink too. Drink them if you got them. Now, then it is open to you to achieve the best work that, has, that, that ever ye wrought. If only you will hinder their escaping. The slave then revealed that the Greek fleet was planning to flee that very night. Having heard from his own spies about the dissension in the Greek camp, Xerxes believed the Mosley's message and sent a squadron of 200 Egyptian ships to block the exit from the straits. The Greeks suddenly had no choice but to stay and fight. 
Demosthenes' brilliant plan was to lure the Persian fleet into the narrow straits between the port of Pyrrhus and the island of Salamis, where the enemy would have no room to, to for maneuver. Oh, this is a long entry. We're getting some history today. Uh, outnumbering the Greeks more than two to one on the next day, some 1,000 of Xerxes' galleys fell into the Greek trap. According to Herodotus, Themistocles delayed the final action until the time when there was a regularly strong breeze from the open sea that brings a high swell into the straits, which presented no difficulty to the low-built Greek ships, but was harmful to the slow and cumbersome Persians, with the high sterns and decks as it made them vulnerable to the quick attacks of the Greeks. For seven long hours, the Greeks harried the Persians. Greek triremes ran up alongside the enemy galley, shearing off their oars, and then return to ram or board. When the day became evening, some 300 Persian galleys lay shattered on the seabed against losses of only 40 for the Greeks. Xerxes had remained on dry land, sitting in his golden throne, high upon uh, a, a prom promontory to watch his inevitable victory as more and more of his ships went down. His allied uh, Artemisia, queen of the Heliconarsis, rammed and sank an enemy trireme at which the king lamented, my men have become women, my women men. Defeated and fearful of being cut off in Greece, Xerxes scuttled back to Persia, leaving behind an army to achieve on land what he had so conspicuously failed to do by sea. But in August the following year, the army was destroyed at the Battle of Plataea. The Battle of Salamis was much more than the first great naval battle in history. With the victory of Plataea, it ended Persian threat for a century and a half until Alexander the Great finally conquered Persia Empire in 331 BC. More on that, it prevented that, uh, more than that, it prevented Greece from being crushed by Oriental despotism, leaving it free to develop its systems of democracy and the philosophical ideas that have pervaded Western civilization ever since. In the words of historian Will Durant, it made Europe possible. So there you have it. That is the entry, 22nd September, uh, 480 B.C., and uh, the game I thought I would pull out on this is uh, War Galley. Uh, now, War Galley, um, there's not a lot of battles or a lot of war games that cover the Battle of Salamis, which, you know, first great naval battle, actually, you know, one of the great naval battles of all time, given all that it w uh, led to and how decisive it was and what it protected for future generations um, and development of uh, Western civilization. So um, you would think there'd be more games on it. There's really not a lot, but probably one of the best ones that I found was a War Galley. And actually, War Galley does not have it in its uh, base battles, which I found also kind of odd. Uh, War Galley is part of the Great Battles of History. It's volume number seven. However, um, I don't know. I uh, it, it's it's related to the Great Battles of History. But it really is its own system. It's all about naval combat, and so it, it some of some of the concepts from Great Battles history translate, but uh, very loosely. Now there are a few, I believe, Great Battles of history scenarios that have both land and naval forces. I think some of, uh, I think there might be some in the Caesar, uh, or maybe it's Alex. I think it's the Caesar one. Um, has both and 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 the the naval rules in there are are very similar they're they're well basically based on this but they're a little bit more uh reduced i believe it's been a while since i played that uh this game is uh as complex as great battles of history but again it's really focusing more on the naval aspect so it does, has a lot of different twists and turns to it uh now they did come out with the salamis uh expansion and that is what I picked up. So this is the rule book for that. And there, here are the counters for that. And I keep it uh, in a separate baggie. For this, this, this was a war galley module. But you can see an example of the ships there. That's actually the back side. I don't know if I can get a front side. There we go. There's a front side right there. And you have all the, the movement and it's combat and it's ramming and uh, the like. I mean, these were triremes, so these were oared ships. And you would kind of go along, one of your strategies was, is to go along your opponents and rake their ships or, you know, uh, try to shear off their oars and leave them uh, motionless. Uh, or you ram them. The, they had very strong uh, 
sterns that you can kind of take out the um, take out the other ships. Uh, and or you had boarding parties. They had Marines on these ships and you would kind of get close and grapple and then uh, do, it became hand-to-hand -hand fighting on these large decks that were uh, you know pulled together and, and uh, joined. So uh, there's a lot of rules on that which are not you know not something you're going to find in the general great battles of history except in maybe a few scenarios. But in here, that's what this is all about. And so this is the Battle of Salamis. Uh, and I find this to be a pretty good uh, rendition of it. Now, there's not a lot of room for maneuver here because you're, you're, you're trapping him in these straits here. Uh, so it's, this isn't a lot of open uh, ocean, you know, moving around and trying to, you know, come, come across uh, or come, you know, do some ramming actions. You're going to be smashed together relatively quickly in this uh, scenario, given that you have these narrow straits here. Um, so there's a lot of combat. And so, and, and leaders in that regard, I don't think leaders have the same effect as they would in, in more open uh, seas type scenarios. Uh, and, and again, there's a lot of combat uh, to be had, you know, a lot of boarding that goes on in here and ramming that goes along in the scenario. So, so that's what I had for you today on uh, the 22nd of September. Uh, back in 480 BC, we had the Battle of Salamis, which uh, you know goes down in history as one of uh, one of the more uh, interesting and more decisive battles, especially naval battles of history. Thanks all for stopping by. Love to know your thoughts on uh, War Galley or this battle in particular, or anything that else is on your mind. Just keep it civil. Take care. Thanks for watching.